I played Mame in the senior class play and, and uh, deciding I wanted to be an actress. And uh, the one school that I really had, had read about in the uh, Buffalo Evening News, it had just opened the drama division of the Juilliard School. And I, who had done high school theater and musicals and experimental theater at the um, University of Buffalo back in the late 60s, there was, you know, Grotowski was visiting and Joe Chaikin, and I was doing street theater, and it was very, very I got into Juilliard, and, and it was like uh, English uh, theater training. John Hausman was the head of it at that time. Huge emphasis on voice and speech every day voice classes, speech classes, the great Edith Skinner. Um, from from uh, my first month at Juilliard, I played the nurse in Romeo and Juliet. I played Viola in Twelfth Night. I played Mistress Quickly while I was there. I did Jacobean plays. Um, we had, it was really a lot of classical training. And when I left Juilliard, uh, the first play I did professionally really was I went to um, American Shakespeare Theater where I, in Stratford, Connecticut, I understudied um, <coughs> Lady Capulet. I understudied Roberta Maxwell, Lady Capulet, and uh, and Viola, uh, I think Carol Shelley, and uh, Liz Ashley, and Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. So it's like doing Shakespeare, working on Shakespeare. And the first job, when I was still in Juilliard, I real realized. I was a lady in waiting in the Shakespeare in the Park production of Hamlet with Stacy Keach, James Earl Jones, Colleen Dewhurst, uh, Sam Waterston as Laertes, Raul Julia. Uh, it was uh, so I had done a lot of uh, classical work, and my first really big role that I played professionally out after Juilliard was "Tis Pity She's a Whore," the um, the uh, young girl, and that's of course. It's not as grand. The language is not as grand as Shakespeare, as um, rich, but it's still a verse, and it's still demanding. Um, uh, you have to you know, know how to speak it. So I also did Moliere. I did Chekhov. I did so many wonderful plays in my early years as an actress, doing you know regional theater or the Shakespeare Festival. Or, and uh, I, honestly, one of my favorite roles, probably the most favorite thing I had ever done on stage, was Shakespeare in the Park doing Helena in Midsummer Night's Dream. I remember it as the happiest, happiest time in my life. As an audience, it was the happiest experience <laughs> that I've had. Tell me about what you feel having this training contributed to your role in the lighter vein, because you're such an expert in light comedy. I mean, that's what I would call civil or the, the, the real thing or the stuff that you know I know you're from what 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 has um, has helped or has hurt or well you know it, it's almost like the it's almost like having a ballet training where that becomes your base or classical pianistic training it, it requires so much like skill it's it's just a wonderful base to have once you have it it's like a muscle Everything else can spin off of it. Can and it, it's so much easier to I, I think um, uh, essay r roles written by uh, Noel Coward because you know Coward is still language. Shaw, um, Chekhov. You, you, what do you have as an actor? You have words unless it's film and then it's image and facial expressions or you don't need words as much. But uh, in, on the stage. Um, knowing, I mean, Tom Stoppard, please, you better know how to use language because uh, much of what it is is thinking. The thought comes first and then you speak, which is why a great Shakespearean actress, uh, actor or actress, people think it's all about the sound and the voice and the beauty of the. A great Shakespearean or classical actor or a great actor, period, has the thought very clear and then it comes out as speech. It helps if you have a, a resonant voice or good articulation, but it's not just about articulation and sound. It's about thinking and Shakespeare. There's nobody denser or richer than Shakespeare in terms of images, the intelligence, the richness, vividness of his images. And so a great actor will be able to do that mentally, get into his um, images, and then 
convey it vocally or uh, speech-wise, but once you do Shakespeare, it's, it's ever so much easier to then do other playwrights. You realize it's the same thing as at work, I think. Put on your Hamlet hat for a second and give some advice to a young actor who wanted to study and learn the classics. What would you say to a, a, a young actor? Well, you know, I would say find good teachers. I certainly had wonderful teachers. You do need guidance. Um, you know, I was like lying on a floor every day doing the relaxation and the diaphragm breathing and everything. If you can't get to a conservatory, then find a, a teacher, somebody who has classes or even work privately, but get a set of tapes to um, work every day, breathing, speech, speech exercises. You only develop the voice and, and articulational by doing it. It's, it's not unlike singing. It's not unlike dancing. You do, you do the same thing every day, and you build, build, build your strength up. I just did Boeing, Boeing last year, which is a farce. So, you know, it's very light. It was really hard work. And when I first started, I, I was surprised how tired I was. I was vocally tired by the weekend. I was like, whoa, you know, and I thought, I have a trained voice. By the end of nine months, my voice was so strong and so flexible because I did it every day and before the show I'd warm up. There's no substitute for just like doing the day by day work. If you want to learn how to do Shakespeare, get a good teacher, but like read it out loud. Just sit in your living room and, and read it out loud and then work with somebody who will help you with the text, but then keep working it and put it on tape. And listen to yourself and go, wow, I thought, I thought I was communicating that. I guess I'm not. You know, I'm not getting that. Or I shouldn't have taken a breath there. There's a better way of doing that phrase. It's just, it's kind of nuts and bolts, 98%. Uh, and then, then there's some inspiration. But mostly it's, it's hard work. Fantastic. This is great. Oh. just need one more thing from you. If you look in the camera and say the word poetry. Could you move just? A bit over here. Was I was I going right? No, I was. Ah, no, I like that. I like that mic. Yeah. Yeah. It was far more interesting to hear what you were saying. When you <laughs> the so if you say the word poetry, poetry. poetry.